What you're looking at here is $100,000 of equipment. On the Aruba website, these switches are listed at $25,900. These switches are listed at $18,400. I've got two computers, one over here, one over here, which I used in this video to demonstrate 100 gig ethernet. These two computers have 100 gig Mellanox interface cards in them. I was using one of these 8360 switches to demonstrate 100 gig ethernet. I really wanna thank Aruba for sponsoring this video and sending me this fantastic equipment. Without their support, I wouldn't be able to demonstrate what I'm gonna show you in this video. I'm gonna show you multi-mode versus single mode fiber. I'm gonna show you 100 gig QSFP28, 25 gig SFP28, show you network cards. I'll show you copper SFP versus a fiber SFP. There's a whole bunch of stuff to cover in this video. Okay, let's get started. Here's an example is a QSFP28. This supports 100 gig ethernet. So as an example, I could take this QSFP28 and put it into a port on the switch, 100 gig QSFP. The interface on this QSFP is MPO. And that allows me to use a breakout cable such as this. So MPO on the one side, I could connect that to the switch. But notice here, breakout cable. This supports four 25 gig interfaces. So on this single cable, it's broken out into four. You can see the numbers here. So as an example, I could take cable one and take a 25 gig SFP 28, and I could plug that into this port on the switch as an example, and take port one. These have LC connectors, so I'll take the connectors off and I can plug that into the switch. So I have a 100 gig QSFP28 going to 25 gig SFP28. And I've got four of those here. So what I could do is take another one as an example and simply connect that to another switch. So as an example, here is my 25 gig SFP28. Plug that into this switch over here take for instance port three on this cable and LC connector once again, multi-mode fiber and connect it to that switch. So I could do that for all cables. So I've got multiple 25 gig SFP 28s here. I could connect another cable to this switch and another cable to this switch so that I've got 50 gig uplinks. So something like this. Put those two in, disconnect this, this is two, so put that in there, and this is four, and connect that like that. So 100 gig, single SFP28, going to two 25 gig ports on this switch, and this switch gives me 50 gig uplinks to the core switch. Now. That's just one example. I've also got DAC cables. So this isn't fiber, this is copper, twin axe cable, direct attach cable, these are 100 gig. So as an example, I could put that into there and put that into there. And what I've got now is 100 gig ethernet. So 100 gig ethernet between those two switches. I'll just move this so that I've got more space. But as an example, 100 gig ethernet between those two switches. I've got a few of these, so as an example, if I wanted to, I could connect multiple of these to give me say 200 gigs. So put that one in there and put that one in there. So if I bonded those two together, I could get 200 gig between these two switches. 50 gig uplinks between these two switches to this switch as an example, uh, 100 gig between these two. You may not want to do that, obviously, and that's why I've got another one of these. So here's another 100 gig MPO cable. So what you may want to do as an example is connect it to this switch and then add additional connections to these two switches. 
What I've also got here is a 50 gig DAC cable. So what I could do as an example is connect these two switches together using 50 gig. So as an example, let me pull these out just to make some space here. So rather than just doing that, I could, as an example, run 50 gig directly between the two switches. So I'll remove all of these. And once again, I could, as an example, run 50 gig between these two switches. So this is a 50 gig DAC cable. Now what I demonstrated in my previous video is 100 gig on the Mellanox connections on these PCs using DAC cables to these 8360s. So I could run 100 gig like that. I could, if I, if I preferred, use fiber rather than copper. So as an example, put these into these two switches and then run fiber MPO connections between these two. What I've also got here is 25 gig network cards. I could put fiber SFP pluses in them as an example. These are LC connectors once again. So what I could do is connect a port on the network card to the Aruba SFP like this. So that would give me 25 gig from the PC to the switch. So in the previous video, I demonstrated 100 gig using DAC cables from my PCs to the 100 gig ethernet switches. But that's an example of using fiber. So these have dual ports, so I could connect both to give me 50 gig. But there's an example of 25 gig. I also have 10 gig copper SFPs. So Aruba switches will allow you to run non-Aruba SFPs up to 10 gig. So I could put that in as an example on that switch and this one on this switch. And then I could, if I wanted to, connect a copper cable and connect those two switches together using copper. But what you could do as an example is use a Sonnet converter. This is 10 gig ethernet. And this can connect to a USB-C port on a Mac. So I could connect this to my Mac and I could get 10 gig on that port and I could do the same here ethernet to another sonnet converter so 10 gig to another sonnet converter so I could connect two Macs and I'll demonstrate that where I'm running 10 gig iperf between two Macs using the sonnet connectors so that's copper 10 gig now you could also as an example use fiber this is once again a non Aruba SFP. So I could connect that in here. So I've got fiber LC connectors rather than copper. So hopefully, as you can see, SFPs, QSFPs give you a lot of options. Now, here I've got 48 Ethernet ports. This is copper. They allow me, as an example, to use one gig, such as this. So one gig to USB. Or I could use a connector like this that gives me five gig. These ports support one gig, 2.5, and five gigabits per second. So I have 48 of those ports. One of the problems I've been having with this lab is getting enough endpoints to be able to send enough traffic to the network. I, once again, have too much bandwidth. For me to be able to use 12, 100 gigabit interfaces, is very difficult in a lab environment like this or home environment. I'd need a lot of devices. There's too much bandwidth here. But hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the connections on these switches. Let's talk now about the difference between single mode fiber and multi-mode fiber. And rather than just talking about this, I wanna show you practically by sending a light through the cables and show you the difference between the cables. So these aqua type cables, this is an LC connector. This is multi-mode. This LC connector cable is single mode. Notice yellow cable. So single mode versus multi-mode fiber. Okay, so in this example, I've got a visual fault locator. Fiber doesn't use visual light. So you can't see the light. So that's why you must never point it at your eye. But here, I'll be able to connect this to the fault detector. And I'll be able to see the actual light going through the fiber. 
So here's multi-mode fiber. And what you'll notice, it isn't just a single beam of light. Notice the light is bouncing around. In multi-mode fiber, the core is a lot bigger than in single mode fiber. So the light bounces around. And what you'll notice is if I move this cable, so I bend the cable, the light moves in the cable. So notice how it's moving there. I can adjust the light by just bending the cable slightly. So slight bend in cable, the light is being moved around because this is multi-mode fiber, the light is bouncing around in the cable. So any movement there adjusts the light going through the cable. So that's multi-mode. Single mode, so I'll connect this to the visual light fault locator. And what you'll notice there is the pattern is very different to multi-mode fiber. Notice you see a solid light. And if I move this around, notice it's still a solid light. And what you can actually see is you can see the light bleeding through the cable. So you can see that it's bleeding through the cable. Now that's obviously something you don't wanna do. You don't wanna bend the cable because it'll affect your throughput and you can break the cable. Once again, it's glass inside, so you can break it, but notice there's light bleeding through the cable. And notice even though I bend it and I'm bending it a lot, I still have a single beam of light. It's not bouncing around in the cable. The core is a lot thinner in single mode. Very nice to see it visually, I think much easier to understand multi-mode and single mode if you simply see it like this. And again, here's multi-mode. Notice you can see that there are multiple beams of light there. And if I move it around, you can see once again, all of them moving around, just slight movement there. And if I bend it quite a lot, you can see it's adjusting. So slight movement there, lots of light beams being bounced around. Whereas with single mode, we don't see that. So I'll turn that off again and use single mode one last time. And what you'll notice is a single beam of light. Move it slightly, still single beam of light. It's not multiple beams like we saw with multi-mode. That hopefully shows you quite clearly the difference between single mode fiber and multi-mode fiber. Here we have a single beam of light going through the core or center of the fiber cable. Here we have a bunch of light beams being bounced around the center of the fiber cable. So when you buy SFP, so QSFPs as an example, SFP 56s, you need to make sure that you're using the right cable for the SFP. Is it multi-mode or is it single mode? Make sure you use the right cable type.